I want to bring out Mr. Kevin Sorbo. I consider him to be a good friend. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Is this working all right? This mic? Awesome. Things at an angle, I can't put it on there. So wow, how are you? So I had a little dinner last night with some of the big laminine, big wig guys. So we got Korea. We've got Malaysia. We've got Indonesia. We've got the Philippines, and we got the U.S. We got Russia. We've got Russia here for crying out loud. It's like the NATO of health right here. We don't need NATO. NATO doesn't do crap for the world. This company does do something for the world. That's what's the amazing thing. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Kevin Sorbo. I am an actor. I played Hercules for many years on TV. I'm going to brag about Hercules because it became the most watched TV show in the world. We passed Baywatch. I, I, I say because we had a lot of women. We showed a lot of cleavage, so I call it Baywatch BC. Um, I went on to do another series called Andromeda for five years after that. Andromeda, for those sci-fi fans, we got a few. I'm a big Gene Roddenberry fan, so it was the first show Gene Roddenberry created after Star Trek. So I'm in New Zealand seven years filming Hercules from 93 to 2000. I'm in Canada for five years from 2000 to 2005. And then I went on to the last uh, seven, eight years. I've shot about 40 movies. I've shot five more already this year. So that's my introduction to you with my little resume for those who don't know who I am. Now you do. Um, Stan's story is, is true. I, I kind of buzz through these gifting suites. I go when I can. They're mostly for women. They rarely give guys stuff when you go to these things. My wife says, go and get me some stuff. <laughs> so that's how I end up there. Um, the coolest thing I think, I, I, I got to backtrack a little bit. The coolest thing I ever did, I, I went to, uh, I was at a Super Bowl gifting suite years ago in Arizona. And these guys from Spalding were there and they had a basketball hoop and backboard and everything. He said, yeah, we'll come to your house and set this up. I went, you're giving me this? And he said, yes, I'm giving you that. And I was like, blown. I have it. I've had it for six years. I use it all the time. So I was like, for me, that was the coolest gift. But I'm going to backtrack now to why laminine is important to my life and how this whole meeting with Stan took place. Um, a lot of people didn't know what was going on uh, with, with my story until recently. I have a book that just came out. Well, it came out two years ago. It is called True Strength. And somebody just held it up right now. Thank you. And um, thank you. Um, I wish I didn't have to write the book, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it was the last three months of the, of the fifth year of Hercules. And I was having problems with my left shoulder. I couldn't figure out what was going on with my shoulder. I was having all these pains. And I was getting these three fingers here kept getting more cold and more numb. And I, it was bugging me. And I called my doctor back in L.A. And I said, you know, I got these things going on. He said, well, have you hit your elbow funny bone lately? And I said, you know, I hit it every day. I'm doing three fight scenes every episode. We're beating each other up all the time. So he said, you probably smashed your ulnar nerve. Don't pay attention to it. So I just kind of blew it off. And I, as I did with a lot of bumps and bruises I got on the show. So I get back to L.A., I was doing um, press on, uh, we finished season five, I come back to Los Angeles, I was doing press on a movie I did called Call the Conqueror, which is a prequel to Conan the Barbarian. So I was in New York doing Letterman, I was in all these different places, and while I was up in Boston doing some press, it got so bad with my shoulder, I called my doctor again, I said, I called the studio actually, Universal Studios, I said, we're going to send a doctor to your room to check you out. Doctor comes up to my room. His name was Dr. Die. I said, you're a freaking doctor. 
I mean, I know you've heard this a million times, but seriously, take your middle name or something. I don't know. I just, it was just, uh, anyway, he hit it on the nail. He said, something cardiovascular is going on with you. So I'm back to LA. I'm in LA. I go see my uh, doctor again. He finds a lump in my left shoulder. The lump, um, they want to do a biopsy on it. I'm freaking out a little bit because I don't know what's going on. I've been healthy my whole life. I go to my chiropractor I've been going through for eight years to this guy. Eight years. He's never cracked my neck in eight years. I don't like my neck cracked. I can crack any other part of my body, leave my neck alone. I'm laying on the table. He says to me, yeah, you got something going on here. He's working my shoulder. A voice inside my head says, don't let him crack your neck. I opened my eyes and said, what did you say? He said, I didn't say anything. I closed my eyes again. A voice as loud as I'm saying right now said, do not let him crack your neck. And I'm going, why am I hearing this voice tell me that? He's never cracked my neck in eight years. Why would he, he crack my neck? Within minutes, I suffered three strokes. The lump in my shoulder ended up being an aneurysm in my left subclavicle, but it was so close to the artery. It was in the main artery feeding into this arm, but the crack of the neck from left to right forced three of those blood clots in, to go into the artery that feeds into my brain. I'm very lucky. I mean, I could have been killed, obviously. I could have been in a wheelchair the rest of my life. There's so many options that could have happened with three bullets to your brain. They were two into my balance center, one went to my vision. I still have a 10% loss of vision in, my, in both eyes the rest of my life. I couldn't balance. I looked like the biggest drunk you'd ever seen in your life for the next three months. I had to learn how to walk again. I, I had to drop out of a movie I was going to do for Universal Studios. Ironically, I was uh, replaced by Patrick Swayze, who ended up having a lot of, as we all know, problems of his own. God bless him and rest his soul. And um, I, uh, I, I spent about three solid years trying to get better. I went back to New Zealand four months later. I went from a 14-hour workday to one hour a day for the first month. I could barely work. I could barely walk. They would prop me up against a tree, have me sit down, do one or two scenes. If you watch season six, you can see that I lost about 15 pounds of muscle. Things were changing. I slowly worked it back up to about eight hours a day during the two, last two seasons I had on the show. So the number of issues that I had going on inside my head, I, I was suffering vertigo. I was having uh, anxiety, uh, an, I mean, panic anxiety attacks. I was having um, the sensation that I was falling backwards 24 hours a day. It didn't matter if I was laying down in bed, seated, standing, I was falling backwards. I had to deal with this stuff every single day. The first two years were by far the most brutal. Uh, the first year in Andromeda was still, was still touch and go, but I, started, it, I, I made leaps and bounds with my progression then. But one thing that I had that was the biggest problem for me was my sleep. I couldn't get sleep. I, I, was, I would sleep for an hour, wake up, sleep for two hours, wake up, sleep for an hour and a half, wake up. I slept horribly. So now we flash forward to a uh, meeting with Stan all these years later. Have I had progression? I've been lucky. God bless. You know, I'm very fortunate to keep working in this career. I'm very lucky to keep on going. I, I'm very fortunate that Universal Studios, well, they wanted to keep the show going because it was the most watched show in the world. So I don't know if they cared about me that much as much as they cared about <laughs> the money the studio was making off the series. So, but that, that gave me... To continue to work, that gave me a light at the, you know, at, at the end of a very, very dark tunnel in my life. I luckily had the support of my wife that was pushing and pushing and pushing for me to get better. And um, also, she's the reason the book was even written. I didn't want to write the book. I didn't want, you know, it's hard to show the world your frailties. It's hard to show when you're playing the strongest man in the world that you're weak. And so I didn't want to tell my story. I kept notes, but I kept notes only for myself so I could track my progression. When I first started going, for me to get from the bedroom to the bathroom was a triumph on my own. That was like a little, you know, then once I got a block, then I could walk two blocks. And I kept notes of that. I said, you know, I did three blocks today. And it, it, was, it was tough on me and it was brutal, but I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing because that's the way my mindset is. I'm the type of guy that actually fits perfect for what you guys are doing because I believe you're the same type of person. You have to push yourself to be successful in anything in life. And if there's, if there's, there's got to be the pain to go along with the gain. That's just life. You're going to get rejected. I'm in a business. I'm a 13-year overnight success, by the way. Okay? <laughs> I put my time into Hollywood. I was too young, I was too old, I was too tall, I was too short, I was everything that, that they don't want, and that's the way Hollywood is. Everything in Hollywood deals with rejection. So trust me, I know what you go through when you push, your, you know, you're talking to people about laminine, you're talking about how great the product is, and you get shut down. That's, you know, that's the way it is. But anything worthwhile in life is worth pushing for. And that's why I, I was, with my mentality, I push and push myself to get better. My wife said, you have to write this book. People know you around the world. I mean, both my series are still in 100 countries around the world. In the States here, for crying out loud, it's on Netflix, Hub TV, uh, uh, Encore Cable. So I'm getting a whole slew of these 12-year-old kids stopping me at the supermarkets saying, oh my God, it's Hercules, you know? So <laughs> the power of television is amazing in itself. 
But so I finally did write the book. I sat down, it took about a year and a half to write it. I put it out there, the response has been amazing. I've been in, I do speeches at least once a month across the country and up in Canada. I, I, I speak at hospitals, I speak at neurological institutes, I speak at churches, I speak at bookstores, and I get people coming up to me that were cancer survivors. Uh, stroke, heart attack, car accident, whatever it may be, crying and saying, your book has motivated me. Because the one thing I tell people, and that's what I would tell you here right now, is don't let, don't let other people set your limitations. Do not let people do that, because people will do that. Um, so yes, I did meet Stan, and uh, Stan said, you're tall, you're an actor who's tall. I said, yes, I know, it's a strange combination, but it does happen. And uh, he told me about the product, and I was very fascinated by the product. I'm not a guy, I don't like taking drugs. You know, you, you watch these commercials on TV, why would anybody? Good Lord, the 480 things that the, the voiceover guy goes through, rectal bleeding, ear blow explosions, I mean, you're like going, sign me up. I want to do that right now. I mean, it's amazing. So I, I'm a big supplement guy. I take my C's, my B's, my E's. The, I take all those vitamins. I'm a big vitamin guy. I, I eat pretty healthy. I do have a sweet tooth. I like my desserts. Stan and I ran away from the cheesecake last night, but I kind of regret it. You know, I was thinking about it the whole drive home, but I had the pop chips in the room when I got home, so I fell a little bit. But... Um, so he told me about the product, and I said, you know, I'm curious, I want to try this. And he said, just take two in the morning, take two at night. Well, here it is two years later, I'm still taking two in the morning, I'm taking two at night. I am, I'm, I'm an early riser, I've always been an early riser, but I get, I get the biggest thing that's made a difference for me is my sleep. You told me, I, mean, I love what you said, it fills the potholes of your life, because I think it affects people differently. And, and for me, all of a sudden, to get five to six hours straight every night, I've been doing that straight now since I've been on Laminine. It's amazing to me. It's, I mean, it, that to me is incredible. That's really all I need. I mean, I'm, you, you know me. I'm up at five in the morning already doing my emails and stuff. So, but I, it, what Laminine has done for me, I, I think it, it's, it's, it's relaxed me more. And yet gives energy at the same time, which is interesting. You know, I don't need to do... It's, it's sort of weird when I meet these people that do the, uh, the vodka with the Red Bull. I <laughs> said... I said, that's like a serious upper with a serious downer. I mean, your body's just going to go all over the place, not going to figure out what to even do with itself. But to sit there and, and, and to talk to friends, look, I have laminine with me all the time. I took my two last night. I took my two this morning already. When I'm on airplanes, I'm always next to somebody. I fly a lot. Eventually, I'll bring it up. We'll talk about whatever it's talking about. And I'll touch on any subject, you know, religion and politics, things that aren't too, you know, controversial. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> And uh, I'm not afraid to bring up. So, um, and I'll, I'll bring up Laminine. And I have met people that uh, are very interested. They've got a hold of Stan with it and got a hold of me. And to me, it's just a matter of getting out there and pushing yourself and pushing yourself. And that's what I do. I mean, I'm not up here as a, as, they're not paying me as a celebrity to be on, on the team. I'm the same thing as you are. I'm out there making my calls. I'm out there trying to get people to get together. I'm putting on Facebook. I'm putting on Twitter. I'm trying to get a hold of people to come be involved in this product. It's, it's, it's a supplement for me. To me, it's just a supplement. And people ask for side effects, I'm going, I, I, you know, there's nothing there, guys. There's no side effects. So to me, it's, there's, it's, a, it's a win-win proposition with this product. And uh, I thank Stan for coming into my life. He's been great. He's, uh, he's my mentor. He pushes me as well. He, I get so many emails and texts from this guy every day. But it's, it's good because it keeps pushing me as well. And, you know, anybody, anybody's here, I mean, I want to meet everybody, but I want to be, anybody who's on my team, I think Mr. Yellow right there. <laughs> Good to see you. Glad you went with the program. Please. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a blessing for me to be here. It's a blessing to me I've met you, and I, I, I am welcome you all and welcome myself to the Laminine family, and I wish for good things for all of you. God bless, and go kick some butt. All right. Put your hands in the air, say